This is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of March 4th, 2024. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.10 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the project's page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the Weekly Top 3 also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we discuss how Even with deficits staring them in the face, the legislature and the administration just can't stop themselves from continuing to spend. Second, we discuss what those who are proposing to means test the PFD really are attempting to achieve. And third, we discuss where we are headed if HJR 7, the constitutionalization of the PFD, doesn't pass. And now, Let's join Michael. Boy, I got to tell you, Brad, there is some stuff going on. And, uh, you know, a couple things. We're going to get into it with number two specifically, but uh, there is some stuff. Uh, First and foremost, let's just get started. They just can't help themselves. They just can't stop. I'm talking about the legislature here. They just cannot help themselves. Give us the rundown here. Well, Michael, uh, uh, we've seen the headlines uh, uh, sort of flash by over the past few weeks. The education bill, the big education bill, the biggest education bill in history, uh, according to uh, to some who uh, who voted for it. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, Judy Colomb's uh, uh, increase uh, in uh, uh, child uh, uh, support, uh, uh, child uh, care uh, uh, subsidies. Right. Uh, we've seen uh, increases in various other things. Finally, last week, we got uh, a total. What, what we haven't seen as, as all of these as all of these spending bills have sort of flashed by, uh, we haven't seen a total uh, of where we are. And uh, last week, uh, uh, legislative finance presented to Senate Finance, uh, Alexi Painter from legislative finance presented to the Senate Finance Committee sort of subtotaling uh, where we've gotten to. And it was eye-opening, just sort of shocking. So if you've got that, if you've got that chart, I want to sort of walk through that uh, as a way way of of sort of educating people about where we are. This was, this was one slide from Alexi's uh, uh, presentation uh, that was an effort to sort of total uh, where we are in terms of the uh, in terms of the budget, um, and this is uh, this is the uh, uh, the slide that that talks about getting to a balanced budget. He start he starts with the fall revenue forecast uh, of six point three one billion dollars. That is the combined total of the oil revenues, the little bit of, uh, of taxes and fees that the state gets. Um, and then, um, and then all of the permanent fund uh, of the POMB draw. Uh, he doesn't break out uh, the PFD portion from the non-PFD portion. He just throws it all in there. And then he uses the governor's operating budget plus transfers, which is the which is what the governor proposed in his budget, and the governor's capital amended capital budget, uh, the two pieces of spending that the governor has proposed. And he subtracts those two from the fall revenue forecast and gets $1.3 billion remaining. Then, and this is where, this is the part that that is important to pay attention to. Then he starts totaling up 
the uh, legislation that is moving its way through both bodies um, and, and adding to spending as we go. The first is SB 140, uh, which has passed both bodies, is sitting on the governor's desk, and that's $241 million by the time they added all in. Um, and then he adds the senior benefits, which is the which is what the Senate has passed. Interestingly enough, he doesn't add the six million dollars for uh, Representative Colomb's bill uh, to increase uh, child care subsidies, uh, but <laughs> it's only six million dollars. Um, and so he gets the remainder after subtracting the legislation pa legislation passed by uh, the the S the SB 140, the education bill, and the senior and the senior benefits. Uh, the remainder of the revenue remaining after the governor's operating budget, the governor's amended capital budget, SB 140 and the senior benefits bill is $1.0 uh, uh, billion, $1.04 billion. Then he takes away uh, two additional items. One is the AEA uh, grid project match. That is the state's portion, uh, a portion of the state's portion of the match to the federal grant that uh, AEA got, the Alaska Energy uh, Agency, that AEA got uh, to help bolster the uh, the rail belt uh, electric grid. This is a portion of the state's match to that, $30 million. And then the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, AMHS uh, shortfall, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, oh, Marine highway system. Thank right. you. Thank you. The Marine highway system. I was trying to think of uh, the Marine highway system shortfall and gets a remainder now of $969.3 uh, million. This is after, you know, t after overall revenues, minus the governor's amended budget, minus the governor's amended capital budget, minus SB 140, minus senior benefits, minus the AEA grid project and minus the, the Marine highway uh, shortfall it gets $969.3 million. Then he compares that to what that would mean in terms of a PFD. And this is where, this is the eye-opening part. Uh, we, would, we, would, we would, wouldn't even come close at, at $969.3 million. This is the way the Senate finance does the math. We wouldn't even come close at $969.3 million to cover the, what they call the $2.3 billion cost uh, of a statutory PFD. It wouldn't even come close to covering, again, what they call the $1.8 billion cost of a 50-50 POFD. Here's, the, here's the, the fascinating part. At $969.3 million remaining after the, those deductions, it would barely, barely, and this is the way the Senate finance looks at it, it would barely cover the cost, cost to them of a 2575 PFD or what they call 7525, which is 75. They put the government first. I put Alaskans first, 2575. They put the government first, 7525. The cost of, uh, of a 2575 would be $914 million. The remaining after what they call that cost of a, of a 2575 PFD, the remaining for the government, the remaining surplus, if you will, would be $55 million, only $55 million. So after $6.3 billion in revenue, they only have, after all the spending is accounted for, they only have 969, all the spending that's, that's passed or, or almost passed, they only yeah. have $969 million remaining. And after the, the POM, the 2575, they view it as they only have $55 million remaining. Now, here, here's the trick. <laughs> Here's the trick. There is the sheet that follows this has the, the remainder of the stuff that's sitting out there. So, for example, uh, the governor has two bills uh, that are sitting out there. One is his teacher bonus bill that, that he's now you know holding uh, SB 140 for until he gets his teacher bonus bill. That would add $54.5 million. So Boom. if they... So if they layered that on top of the spending that they've already got and that they're already accounting for, then the PFD is gone That's or, all the, or, the, or the amount yeah. remaining, the, the amount remaining, the, the sur right. surplus is gone. Then there's the governor's 
what he called the Alaska Affordability Act. We talked about that some last week, and that's the tax credit that the governor proposes to give to corporations for doing things like child care for their employees and housing for their employees and other things to reduce the cost for their employees, corporations to reduce the cost for their employees. The cost of that in terms of reduced revenue, because it's a tax revenue, tax credit against taxes that otherwise are due from the corporations, the cost of that is another $237.6 million. So that wipes out, that wipes out the amount remaining. I mean, the, the teacher bonuses wipes out the amount remaining. And then the governor's affordability, Alaska Affordability Act wipes out another $237 million. So you're way below POMB 25, um, 75 at that point. And that's before this list goes on. That's before the legislative capital budget, the legislature's legislators, capital budget additions and district projects are included. It's before uh, the, 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 the additional amount that the University of Alaska for, uh, asked for. It's before uh, the community uh, assistance fund, the normal amount, statutory amount that's due the community assistance fund. It's before deferred maintenance. It's before the renewable energy fund. It's before school construction. It's before school, school major maintenance. If you add all of, all of that in, particularly the governor's affordability Alaska Affordability Act, the tax credit from the Alaska Affordability Act, you can wipe out most of that $914 million fairly quickly. Well, and you know what I don't see here anywhere? The defined benefits bill, which has passed the Senate. I noticed that they didn't include that in this number because they still don't know how much it's going to cost. They didn't like the initial cost estimates. They didn't like the backup. We're supposed to have had a fiscal note. Uh, some are estimating that it could cost upwards of anywhere between 100 and $500 million a year. It's not even, it's nowhere to be found in any of this. What does, what does exactly? So what this tells you is they can't stop themselves. They just can't. They, you know, every little representative Colomb's bill in particular, just, just, you know, comes to mind. They, every little bill has their own, oh, we need to have this. We need to have, you know, increased subsidies for childcare. It's important to Alaska families. It's important to get, you know, working mothers back, back in the workplace. It's, it's important for a number of reasons. We need to have this. Bam, $6 million. You know, Scott Kawasaki, we need to have the senior benefits bill. Uh, you know, we need to support our seniors. We need to, you know, they're the ones who have given in the past. They're the ones that we need to respect and honor and 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 pay back in some form. Bam, another twenty three million dollars. Um, you know, SB one forty. We need it's for the kids. We need to have K through twelve. We need to support K through twelve. Bam, two hundred forty one million dollars. And and the governor, governor's as bad as the rest of them. We need to have we need to have the teacher bonuses. Uh, and I'm going to hold my breath or hold this bill, one of the two, until until you incorporate the teacher bonuses. Bam, another $54 million. And then the Governor's Alaska Affordability Act, the tax credits to corporations to to essentially do government things, but through the through outsourcing government to the corporations. Bam, another $237 million. Teacher benefits, or I mean, uh, uh, defined benefits. You're exactly right to add that on, Michael. Bam, another $100 million or 500 or whatever. It is. It's just they can't stop themselves. And none of these, in the debate of none of these, are they talking about who pays, you know, who's going to bear the burden of this? How are we going to fund it? We can't keep voting. We can't keep adding more and more and more and more and more. And, you know, bam, they just they just keep passing. The Senate's worse than the House. But Representative Colomb's bill shows that the House is trying to keep right there with them. And the and the uh, SB one hundred and forty, the the education bill, is the housekeeping right there with them. Um, it's it's just you know they can't stop themselves. And and what it's doing, you know, at one point Stedman said POMB twenty five seventy four five, or in Stedman's terms POMB seventy five twenty five, because of course the government comes first. Um, POMB seventy five twenty five is it? You know we can draw the line there. We're not going to go below that. Well, heck. You know, you just add in the stuff they've already done or in the process of doing, and they're already within 55 million of it within a within a you know a a a, a, a hair's breadth uh, of of taking it away. 
and going below it and all of this additional stuff that's out there just just flows right on just we'll we'll just you know run that run that down even more the government can't stop itself as long as once it broke into the pfd just like once it broke into the statutory budget reserve and then broke into the constitutional budget reserve once it broke into the pfd it's they're treating it like you know another savings account another kitty another you know, thing we can dip into, and all of this stuff's important. Julie Colomb, it's for, it's for, it's for, it's really for the kids, you know. And it's just, and they just can't stop themselves. And it's just, I, if we don't put a break on this somehow, and Ben Carpenter's HJR seven, which we'll talk about in the third segment, if we don't put a break on this somehow, it's just going to go all away. And we're, and we're already, I mean, we've statutory PFD is already the way they do the calculations. Statutory PFD is already gone 50 50. PFD is just, you know, somewhere in the, in the past distance. Um, and S and, and, and PFD 75 or POMV, uh, uh, 2575 is, is approaching the same status as, as those two statutory PFD and the POMV 50 50. And one last, it's the governor that's adding to this. It's the governor. It, it's, it's not just the house. It's not just the house coalition it's not just the senate it's the governor that's adding to this in terms of the teacher bonuses and the alaska affordability act this whole thing again as you said is just they can't help themselves they just continue to go in the same direction over and over again it's i i'm just i'm i I guess i'm just astonished again to, to watch this over and over again to see this happen and to know exactly how this is going to break out uh, in the long run, which basically means the PFD is going to be gone. And by the way, the capital budget is supposed to be like 30% of the overall budget. So if they added another 30% on top of that, or even half that, 15% of the budget in capital expenditures, that $900 million is definitely gone at that point. Just look at these numbers. And again, this is you know legislation passed by one or both bodies. And, and it's just, to me, the glaringly obvious fact is that they kept the Define benefits spending out of this. Now, maybe it's because, well, we didn't have a number. But again, Donna mentions it in here. A Reason Magazine, the Reason Foundation, not magazine, but Reason Foundation, who came in and testified on it, said it could cost almost $10 billion. Now, I think that was over a 10-year period. I asked Donna how long, but I think it's over a 10-year period. Yeah. But that's a billion dollars a year. That in and of itself would suck up all the available money left over by the PFD. I mean, it, it just... They can't, they cannot stop. And, and I don't even, I don't even know how you, you point it out to them and they're just like, no, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Not, not nothing bad possibly could have happened here. Again, yeah. hold my they, beer while I shovel coal into the train as we go for the bridge. They don't feel constraints. I mean, they, they're, everybody has a pet project. I mean, we saw this all the way back in 2019, right? When, when the governor couldn't even get 16 to back up his vetoes. It, we, they, everybody has a pet project and everybody has a story behind their pet project and everybody has a constituency behind their pet project. I mean, the governor's pet project is, uh, is the teacher bonuses and, and the Alaska affordability act. What a horrible, horrible piece of legislation. It, it, everybody has their, their pet projects. And, and they all have a story behind it and they all have a constituency behind it and they put it on the floor and nobody wants to vote against it. I mean, nobody wanted to vote against Judy Clum's, uh, uh, childcare, uh, subsidy bill. Nobody wants to vote against senior benefits. Oh my God, we can't vote against seniors. Nobody wants to vote against K through 12, you know, which, which at, at, at one point was the bare minimum we possibly could do. And, and it's, and it's below the bare minimum we possibly could do. And then it passes and all of a sudden it's the biggest education bill in the state's history. I mean, it's just nobody can't, nobody, can't, they, they can't stop themselves. And, and, and the, the, the failure here or the challenge here that Ben, Ben Carpenter is trying to correct, but the money is just sitting there. It's just, you know, the PFD is supposed to be for the people, but it's just sitting there it's in their reach. And the court told them they could take it. And, and, and they just can't stop themselves from taking it and converting it from, a, uh, from a program 
that is that is has the largest positive adverse uh, largest positive impact on Alaska families um, is fair to all Alaska families. They just can't help dipping into that and and focusing it on their pet projects. And it, it just and and it keeps you know it just keeps on going. This is the expansion of Parkins uh, of uh, Parkinson's uh, principle, Parkinson's law, which basically says, you know, spending expands to consume all available resources. If it's there, they're going to spend it. Uh, and that's exactly where we're at. Spending is going to expand to consume every available resource that's out there. And then some, I mean, they, you know, and and your next one. Oh, I was so furious after reading this last one from this. I've never heard of the guy. He apparently is a hack, uh, uh, perfectly, perfectly positioned to espouse and parrot every view that we've heard from every anti-PFD person in the world. I know we're going to get this. Uh, uh, I know we're going to get this in the next segment, but I read this and I just the more I read it, the angrier I got as I went through this thing. Just this screed of of elitism and everything else. It It really it goes hand in glove with the first one. <laughs> it does. It, I, you know, I, and, and, and the only way to stop this, Michael, I mean, I say it in ways that, that, that upset people sometimes, but the only way to stop this is to stop the revenue. And the only way to stop the revenue is to make all Alaskans contribute to it. As long as we've got some Alaskans that don't, a big segment of Alaskans that don't have to contribute revenue can just watch this spending go on without any harm to them. They don't care. All right, Brad Keithley continues with us, the weekly top three. This is number two of the weekly top three. Uh, and I got so angry, almost punched my monitor. I was so upset about this. Um, the, uh, the, the, the second one is the, is the, is the feature. It's an opinion piece from Al Balea in, um, in the ADN. And apparently he's a professor, visiting professor, ex oil and gas employee, just doing a, a leadership trainer. I mean, if that's the kind of leadership course this guy teaches, I definitely don't want to be attending his courses, uh, talking about means testing for the PFD, but that's just part of it. This whole, this whole thing, go ahead, Brad, I'll let you go on it. <laughs> no, no, you're, 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 you're on so, a roll. Well, this guy, I mean, look, this whole thing, um, as, as we read through this opinion piece, uh, there's a couple things that just, st just stood out for me, uh, talking about, um, you know, that uh, that we're just pretending not to know the only reason that we would increase taxes to be able to pay the dividend. Not one word in here about the size and scope of government. Not what it's like. It's totally tone deaf as to what's going on with the spend in the state. As long as the money's being spent, I don't care. Hey, as long as everybody else is paying, I don't care. That's literally what I got out of this. Yeah. So, Al, I know Al. Uh, Al it's Al Belay. And Al, uh, at one time, was president of BP's oil pipelines uh, in Alaska and has had went on and did other things for BP and then retired and, and among other things, has taught leadership courses and got himself a, a job over at UAA teaching uh, leadership courses uh, there as well. Um, and it is elitist. I mean, that's sort of Al. It is elitist. And it's, it's look, you know. We all know the PFD is just a welfare program, and so let's focus it on the on on the lower income uh, Alaska families, and uh, and we'll take the rest of it for government because we know how to spend it better. Government knows how to spend it better, use it better than uh, anybody else. Um, it's it's that sort of it's that sort of tone. Here's I, I've 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 delved into I, this is not the first time Al's written this this article. It, he wrote it a year ago in response to ba Matt Berman's piece. Uh, that called the PFD attacks or PFD cuts attacks and talked about a better way to raise revenue than, uh, than through PFD cuts, a much lower impact way, a much fairer way to Alaska families. Al wrote essentially this same piece as a response in the ADN uh, when Matt wrote to, when Matt wrote his piece. Uh, and I, I delved into it cause I'm, you know, I was interested in the numbers. What, what do the numbers actually look like? Here's the deal, Michael. The deal is our deficits are so big that you'd have to wipe out not only the PFD to the top 20%, but largely to the top 50% and maybe the top 60% in order to balance the budget 
in order in order to balance the budget at where we are now and have something left over for uh, uh, lower income families. So not only is Al talking about wipe, not only is he talk, talking about, you know, wiping out the PFD to the top 20% to the upper income, he's talking about wiping out the PFD largely to middle income Alaska families um, as well to, to, to balance the budget. Um, and it's, it doesn't uh, end there. I mean, as you look at budget growth, which we do, if you look at the 10 year forecast, um, it gradually starts eating away at low income Alaska families too. And it gets easier for the legislature to eat away at it by saying, well, it's a welfare. We've turned it into a welfare program. It's now a welfare program. We can't afford this generous welfare program. And so we either need to, we need to reduce the, 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 the population to which it goes further, or we need to cut the level of the PFD further. And it just, it just gradually drags down. Uh, the program that way. So it doesn't even ultimately protect low-income Alaska families. Here's the final deal. And and Al knows this, and yet he writes these columns. What it really is, is, is a protection plan for the top 20%. What happens is they give up their PFDs. They ca- they, essentially, they, they, they say, okay, we're going to give up our PFDs and concentrate them on, on they say middle and lower income, but what they really mean is the, is the lower half of Alaska families. And, and we'll give up our PFD. When we start talking about taxes in the future, they'll say, hey, we already gave up ours. We already gave up our PFD. So you can't tax us. You can't tax the top 20%. It's cheap insurance for the top 20%. It caps their tax liability at the cost of their PFD, which is like 0.5%. Of the of the top one top one percent, even though PFD PFD cuts take twenty percent of the income of the average low income Alaska family, ten percent of the average low middle income Alaska family, they take only zero point five percent of the top one uh, percent of Alaska of Alaska families, but but it caps their liability, so they they get insurance against ever paying taxes. By saying, look, we gave up our PFD. That was our contribution. You now, you now need to take whatever additional money you need out of low-income Alaska families. Um, and ultimately wipes, wipes out the PFD uh, that way. It is, it, is, it is a very cynical approach by the top 20% to try to buy insurance to keep their liability, their share of government, uh, of government costs down. And it's... You know, it's, it's all the other things that got called. The, this proposal, in some form, got put on the floor during the House uh, debate on amendments on HJR seven. Um, a couple of representatives put out uh, mean, uh, proposals that were essentially mean test, means testing. And Jamie Allard called it discriminatory that you just want to give the PFD to some Alaskans, not all Alaskans. It's you know, it's all Alaskans' share of the wealth, but you're trying to take it away from some Alaskans. It, it's all those things. But it's also it's also just a, a a charade in terms of what it's going to accomplish. It's not going to accomplish what uh, what they think it's going to accomplish. The PFD right. will continue to be eaten away. It's really at the end of the day, it's just a very cynical way for the top twenty percent to try to uh, try to cap uh, their tax liability. I love how Zach Fields also threw an amendment in there that would make unemployed residents ineligible for the PFD. Um, which uh, immediately just, you know, if you're 18 years old and you're unemployed, so if you're if you're living at home or if you're a housewife or a house dad, one of the two, um, you would be ineligible because you chose to stay home to work or to take care of your kids or whatever it else it is. Or maybe you're just even just unemployed at the time. You just couldn't get your PF. I mean, it's just like every time, every turn, every turn, let's take money from people who can least afford it. Yeah. There's a lot of limousine liberals. A lot of the liberals in this state are limousine liberals, right? I mean, it's it's tax somebody. Don't tax me. Do all these programs. Have all these programs, these spending programs, these social programs. But don't tax me to pay for it. I don't want to pay for it. You know, make somebody else pay for it. And um, and Zach certainly is is the leader of the pack in terms of he and Matt he in the House and Matt Clayman in the Senate are certainly the leaders of the pack uh, in terms of being limousine limousine liberals. Tax somebody else other than me. But Al's right in there with them. I mean, Al's, it, it, it's, it's, it's had this debate with somebody who truly thought means testing was the right way to go. 
and and you know they they present themselves as I'm really concerned about about middle income and lower income Alaska families. I really want to concentrate uh, this PFD uh, on those families to make sure that they have you know something uh, that, that they have some support, some income support. But once you once you sort of blow through that and say, uh, well, it wouldn't reach middle income Alaska families because the deficit's too big. And it's gradually you're gradually going to eat it away from lower income Alaska families also as you try as you fund additional government programs. Once you blow through that and realize it's really a very cynical way for the top 20 percent to cap to cap their tax liability, it, it becomes becomes something that uh, that those who advocate it, I don't have much respect for. It. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's ultimately frustrating to watch this kind of thing. And then to tie that again back to your number one of the weekly top three, which is they just can't help themselves. I mean, does this does this madness stop? We're going to consume absolutely every dollar that's available. Oh, and we should just kill the PFD and take all that as well so that we can use that for. I mean, at what point does he not realize or does somebody not realize based on the OMB projections and everything else? That not only will the PFD be gone, they'll be looking for even more money, more and more money at that time. Well, Al, Al's hoping Al's hoping that uh, that that the defense uh, that the top twenty percent will be able to put in at that point is, hey, we already gave ours. We gave up our PFD a long time ago. Don't tax us. We gave up our PFD. We capped our liability. There was once a proposal around a few years ago. It said, we'll have a tax, but we'll cap it at the amount of the PFD. Well, that sounds good to start with, but then you realize the deficits are so big that that the that the lie that the that the amount of revenue you need to raise to cover the deficits as a percent of income is much higher than than the PFD is as, as a percent of income to the top 20%. And it's really, you know, we'll we'll tax cap the tax at at the level of the of the PFD is really just a top 20%, uh, uh, a cynical top 20% ruse to try to dodge liability, the additional liability they've got for uh, the increased spending and push that liability off on uh, middle and lower income Alaska families. This is just another, I mean, the, 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 the means testing the PFD is just another way of trying to use of, of the old program of capping your tax liability at the level of the PFD. I know this Al Boy guy doesn't know me from Adam and he probably doesn't even care what I'm saying, but my God, I read through this and I was just so agitated by the entire tone of this. And is this is what, I mean, is this the elitism that all these people are feeling? Is this just a snapshot of all this elite? I mean, the whole thing in all my years of teaching, I've, never seen anything like this. You know, the first is what I call pretending to know. The current example is pretending not to know that the state can no longer afford to pay a permanent fund dividend. And I, from then on, it just went downhill. And I'm just like, okay, uh, we're just going to, we're just going to spend all the dollars that we can. And nobody gets it. Nobody understands the history of the permanent fund. They don't understand the, the genesis and the reason for it. They don't understand any of that. It's all just government money and it should just all be spent right now. Yep, exactly right. I mean, that, that is, that is the elitism. It is the elitism. It is, I'm not going to pay it. And, and here's where it starts, Michael. I mean, th they are bought into this, this proposition that Alaskans don't pay taxes, right? That's, that's their starting point. And I don't want to pay taxes. I, in the top 20%, I don't want to pay taxes. And, and, you know, the fact that PFD cuts are a tax on Alaska families, um, uh, they just don't happen to be a significant tax on the top 20%, but they are significant on middle and lower income Alaska families. The fact that they are a tax doesn't, doesn't even cross their mind. It's government money. We're just redirecting it to another program. Uh, it used to be this welfare program for everybody. Yeah, we don't need that. We're going to redirect it to another program and, uh, and we're going to go on and I'm not going to, I'm not going to have to pay taxes. And <laughs> There's there's no there's no sense of responsibility. Al, Matt Clayman, Zach Fields, none of them have a sense of responsibility for the government they're creating. They have no sense of 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 of, a, of an interest in the in the in the size of government they're creating because they don't have to pay for it. 
Right. They, they, don't, the, they don't care who pays. Uh, as long as my program gets funded and this program, I mean, this program is important. So as long as this program gets funded, it doesn't matter what it costs. We should pay it. And we being <laughs> everybody else. Exactly right. That's that's the second part. The first part is it should be funded and B, I shouldn't have to pay for it <laughs> because I should use somebody else's money. I should use PFD cuts. I should take it out of the pockets of middle and lower income Alaska families to pay for it. Uh, because we don't have taxes in Alaska. I mean, it's just, it's this, it's this gibberish of, we don't have taxes. We need programs. There's this pot of money. Oh, I know it's important to some of you, but don't worry about that. Um, because we'll create a program for you. If you have enough need after we take all your money, we'll create a program for you. If we have any money left at that point, um, uh, it's just, and the, and the, and the ones who are getting the really short end of the stick are the ones in the middle income bracket. Lower income lower income Alaska families do have some programs that respond to their respond to their needs. Middle income Alaska families don't. They got nothing. And and having the money take take out of them, taken out of their pockets is really the most uh, egregious part of this. All right, we're back Brad Keithley Alaskans for sustainable budgets. It is the weekly top 3. We're done to number 3, which is HJR7. If it's not now, then when is it? Uh, and, and if it's not this, then what is it? Brad, hit me with the hit me with your story here. So HJR seven is probably the best bill that we've had on the floor um, in the last ten years to try to control out of control spending and to try to preserve the PFD. It's Ben Car uh, Ben Carpenter's. I was going to say Ben Cartwright. I go back to the Bonanza days. Ben Carpenter's. Uh, <laughs> when you're old, it's tough, Michael. Sometimes oh, okay. you're, what, you're those, what are you those, talking about? <laughs> ben Carpenter's uh, 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 a bill to create a constitutional amendment to protect the the PFD. Probably the best chance we've got we've had to control spending and to preserve the PFD we've had on the floor in the last ten years. And the reason it is the reason it controls spending is it takes money out of the legislature's pocket and it and it takes it off the table uh, in terms of what the legislature can spend. It directs it uh, to be distributed as PFDs in accordance with the statute, whatever the statute is at any given point in time, and 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 takes that money away from the legislature. And as 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 the first segment showed us. Money needs to be taken away from the legislature because they can't control themselves. They just keep they just keep spending it and spending it and spending it. And Ben's HJR seven is also important uh, because it preserves the PFD program. It preserves Governor Hammond's original vision that a portion of the state's common commonly owned wealth should be distributed directly to Alaska residents, um, as opposed to funneled by government in uh, through through you know twenty plus twenty one plus eleven plus one wherever they want to direct it, the special interests that they want to direct it to, it should be distributed. A portion of it should be distributed broadly. And it protects, it protects that vision um, as well. Probably the most important bill we've had uh, in the legislature from this standpoint uh, in the last 10 years, it was supposed to be on the house floor last week. Uh, it, and it got pulled. It was supposed to last Wednesday and it got pulled. It was supposed to be on the house floor last Friday. It got pulled. It was supposed to be on the house floor yesterday. It got pulled. Um, and, and there's some speculation that, uh, that the reason it's keep, it keeps being pulled is it's short of the votes. It needs two thirds of the vote in both bodies to, to be adopted and, and to go out to the people as a constitutional amendment, even if it passes the house and it should, uh, it's a, it's a bill that should have, that frankly should have both conservative and, and if people are truly concerned about middle and lower income, Alaska families truly concerned about working Alaska families. It's a bill should have that had, should, should have the support of those in the House coalition as well. But even if it passes the the House, uh, the prospects over in the Senate are not great. Uh, it would need two thirds of the Senate as well, uh, and that's a that's a tall order. So some people have started proposing bills to deal with the PFD uh, if um, uh, if HJR essentially if HJR seven doesn't pass. And there's a couple that got picked up in a uh, 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 Alaska news source, uh, uh, KTUU, uh, article, uh, that, uh, that, that, that were sort of, are sort of at the forefront. One is a bill by Mike Cronk 
um, before House Resources Committee, which would give residents the option to receive a, a one-time $15,000 dividend check and $5,000 in land credit uh, in exchange for foregoing uh, all future uh, payouts. There's a lot of problems with that, but it's a, it's a, it's a version of, of the let's just distribute out the 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 permanent fund and and forget about it um uh, it's, it's much more limited version than that but basically what cronk is cronk's bill would do is uh is give people a one-time payment and they would forego uh, all of their uh all of their future future claims if somebody was 90 years old it'd be, probably be a good deal for them for their, for their, <laughs> right right for their for their uh for their dependents uh, but that's one version. Jesse Sumner has a bill in that uh, that would uh, set the PFD by statute, uh, set the PFD at, uh, uh, let's see, what is it? 1500 $1,500, I think. Yeah. Yeah, $1,500, and then uh, use the remainder uh, to uh, to help pay out. It wouldn't cover the cost, but to help pay out uh, the... Uh, the Alaska uh, uh, LNG project, the building the big line down from the North Slope, uh, and uh, and and funding that, it would essentially convert uh, PFDs over the over the limited amount over the amount that that would set, be set by statute uh, into going to um, into the big line. But it wouldn't it wouldn't nearly be enough to pay for the big line, um, and it wouldn't nearly. I mean, as we see from as we saw from the first segment, it wouldn't nearly be enough to pay for government. So basically, what it would say is. We're going to take all this money. We're going to we're going to devote it to the big line, and then we're going to set by statute a fifteen hundred dollar PFD. But that doesn't prevent future legislatures, indeed the next legislature, from cutting that that fifteen hundred dollars because it's set by statute. Uh, keep cutting it down. So we've got we've got people who are coming up with other PFD proposals um, that are you know fun to look at uh, uh, in terms of uh, I wonder how those numbers would work. Uh, but they don't really solve the problem. The, right. the, 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 the bill that solves the problem, the bill that solves government, the government spending problem uh, and puts a, bot, puts a line underneath all this spending is uh, Ben's HJR7. And I think uh, we ought to pay attention when HJR7 finally does get a vote, uh, we ought to pay attention to where those votes go because the people who uh, vote against it uh, clearly uh, are ones who are often the uh, we need big government camp and we don't care who we who we take the money from to uh, well we do care who we take the money from we want to make sure we <laughs> don't take it from the top twenty percent uh, we uh, uh, are in the camp of growing government through uh, through taxes on middle and lower income Alaska families. It's uh, it's interesting. Cliff Grow was quoted in one of the articles. I can't find it right now, but he was quoted basically when he was talking about HGR seven. Is oh well, we couldn't uh, we couldn't amend the the this we couldn't amend the formula. I mean that we you know if we would if we could if we would have done it before. Well, no. Up until this point, you haven't had to because the POMV law takes precedent. You're you're treating it like it takes precedent over everything. So no, you could have. And then there's a quote in this KTUU article from uh, Andy Josephson who says, the question is, could we ever change the formula? And the problem with the current formula is that it would cost the state $2.3 billion and instantly create a $1.1 billion deficit. What HDR7 would do is say, look, we're going to make some adjustments to this, but there's no invocation, indication that's ever going to happen. You're acting like you don't have the opportunity opportunity to change the statute. And by the way, HDR7 wouldn't even go into effect till like 2026, 2027. So you got two years to figure out what you need to do. The thing is, they don't want to take a stand on the statutory formula. That's why they've always avoided it. The the court said they could change it. They could, you know, they could basically said you can change the law anytime you, they've never changed it. They simply broken it and ignored it because nobody wants to take a stand on the statutory formula itself, especially in an election year. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, Andy Josephson, especially uh, is, uh, is the embodiment of what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago when uh, uh, uh Governor Walker's uh, former uh, former chief of staff, uh, 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 Scott Kendall, talked about you know said the quiet part out loud. Said we can't we can't uh, pass HJR seven because the government wouldn't have enough money. And basically, what that is, we can't raise it from the top twenty percent. We can't raise it from anybody else. We need to confiscate it 
uh, from middle and lower income Alaska families. We need to confiscate their money to fund government because we don't think we can raise the same amount if we have to do it on a broad based basis or if we have to go, you know, raise oil taxes or if we have to do something else. We don't think we have enough to vote votes to do that. So we need we need to stay where we we need to stay where we are, where we, where we can raid the PFD whenever we need to for whatever amount we need to. Uh, and continue to fund big government programs. That tells you exactly what's going on. It tells you exactly what HJR7 does. HJR7 puts a bottom line under government spending. And uh, and if we don't do that, you know, we're, we're going to go back. We're going to be having the first segment uh, of, the sh of today's show over and over and over and over again about, well, look what they did this time. And now it's not POMB 2575. Now it's POMB 50. 2080 and now it's 1585 right. and now it's 1090 as it, as it just gradually fades away. It's 100% for government. It's 100%. That's what it should be, right? That's what everybody says right now. Uh, less than two minutes here, Brad. Let's summate everything. One, two, and three. I mean, they're all conjoined, but it's just there's a sickness. There's a disease. The politician's disease has now run rampant. It's reached epidemic stage. Uh, it, oh, I would say pandemic stage in the legislature right now. Uh, they just can't help themselves. And they're going to spend every available dollar and glom on to any ones they can. Your final thoughts. Well, and 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 Michael, the, the 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 sad thing about this is it's both sides of the aisle, and it includes the governor. I mean, everybody has come up with a scheme for how they can spend the 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 PFD, spend the remaining dollars. Judy Colum's uh, 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 child uh, care subsidization bill, the education bill, Governor Dunleavy's seventy-five million dollars or seventy-six million dollars, whatever the heck it is for. Um, uh, teacher bonuses, Governor Dunleavy's Alaska Affordability Act, two hundred and fifty million dollars for the Alaska Affordability Act to create a tax credit so to outsource government functions to uh, to private to, to to the corporations. It's just they can't stop themselves. HJR seven would, right? And 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 that's why you know that's when why it gets can't to the find floor, any support in the Senate right now. Rob Myers was on yesterday. He said seven, maybe eight votes, and that's about all they've got right now, counting heads in the Senate. So. Good luck with that. Unfortunately, it's 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 frightening. This makes me come to the conclusion um, that. Well, I've come to this before and I've said it before. I, I really think that we're going to have to hit the rock bottom before anybody wakes up. I really do. I mean, I, I think at this point, watching all this, I mean, at a national level, too. But I mean, really here in the state of Alaska, the whole thing's going to have to explode before anybody ever actually goes, well, wait, maybe we should have, could have done it that, you know, and they'll go back and say that Brad Keithley guy, he was right. That Michael Dukes guy, he was right. Well, great. I'll be right. But you could have stopped it. You know, you could have pulled the brake lever instead of shoveling the coal in. And that's all they're doing right now. Yeah. The problem is the problem is the PFD, PFD will be gone. I mean, to hit rock bottom, the PFD will be gone and it's, and it's going to be, at that point, we will have created so many spending constituencies out there, so many people invested in, in spending for the programs that we will have created uh, that uh, we won't be able to get it back. Well, it'll be uh, devastating. It'll be devastating to people. We will have created such a dependency state that people will be hurt across the spectrum, and it was avoidable. That's the thing. It was avoidable, but nobody wanted to exercise any kind of self-control and this is and it's all this is all pointing right to that fiscal cliff that we're about to plunge off of with the locomotive at high speed. And, you know, it could, the thing is, it's preventable. That's the worst part. It's preventable. But nobody wants to take the hard stand. Well, I mean, let me say Ben Carpenter and some of those other are taking the hard stand, but nobody else in the in the, in the group wants to go. Well, he's right. Or maybe behind their hands, they say he's right, but I just can't let my kids. I've got not my project. My project's important. My district asked for child care. My district asked for the division of ag to be there uh, and everything. No, we couldn't pay the price for all this. Somebody else should pay the price. Yeah, exactly, and, Michael. And and and, 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 and 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 we're creating programs. I mean, people sort of view this as the the way legislative finance does this is this is this is the coming year. But what you don't really let sink in and what looking at a 10 year plan or even a 20 year plan begins to tell you is we can't afford 
where this is going. Even if you take away the entire PFD, um, and even if you start in on taxes, we can't afford where this is going. We can't afford the programs that we've created uh, as as they continue to grow, as they continue to expand. This nirvana, nirvana that everybody thinks they're getting to out there where Alaska's funded all these programs and everybody's coming back. They ain't going to be coming back, folks, because we can't we can't afford the continuation of those programs. We are draining ourselves, not only currently, we're draining ourselves into the future. Some people talk about, well, if we can just get to $100 billion in the permanent fund, that'll throw off enough cash to, to, to finance us. It won't. If you, if you look at the projections, uh, even if you assume some oil production growth and you assume some oil production price growth, both of which are pretty risky uh, projections at this point, even if you assume that, and even if you assume $100 billion in the permanent fund, and even if you assume that's throwing off 5% a year, it can't pay for the government we're creating. And, and you know, we're going to be, we're having this debate now, we're going to be having this debate 10 years from now, 20 years from now, except people are going to be saying, I, I can't tax myself to the level to pay for the government we've created. Well, there was that article in Must Read, and I've forgotten who the guy's name was, uh, but he was going through it. And he's like, just if you looked at just the spend on schools, it's 6.7 percent of the overall income of the state is being spent on schools. So just to pay for schools, if you had to uh, if you had to tax, you'd have to put a 6.7 percent tax on uh, all the available income in the state just to pay for schools. Um, I mean, just think about that for a minute. 6.7% of all income, just you'd have to pay that tax right off the right off the get. What what sort of happened? I mean, this goes back to the early 20 teens when we saw this with the with the AstroTurf for AstroTurf football fields for all of the high schools in the state. What sort of happened somewhere along the way is is the sense that we want to live in Alaska, but we want to have all of the all of the great things that the lower 48 has. Right. So we're gonna I'll so we're gonna in Alaska, but I want to live like I'm in Seattle. Yeah, exactly. And I'm and and I want all the social programs that I had when I was in the lower 48. And I want all of the all of the fancy stuff that I had when I was in the lower 48. And I want the great universities that I had when I was in the lower all three of them that I had when I was in the that I had when I was in the lower 48. And that's not Alaska. We can't finance all that stuff. Right. We, we are a smaller state and we need to we need to have limited expectations. We come here for the life, for the lifestyle. Right. Uh, if, if you want, if you want all the social programs, go to Illinois or go to go to California. Well, it's, the, go to it's, the Cali it's a Californication of Alaska, which has happened in many other states where they moved out of California because of all the taxes and everything else. And then they go someplace else and they're like, we really like it to be like it was back there. You don't understand correlation, causation. You, you know, the causality is you wanted all those things. And that's why you left, because because of all those things, you, it was making it untenable to live there. And nobody nobody acknowledges that. Nobody acknowledges that as well. You wanted all those things. You wanted all those things, but you didn't like the taxes you had to pay to pay for them. So you came to a state where you thought you could get all those things, where you keep voting those things in because you think you don't have to pay for it. Yeah, but but that's, well, that's but, always but, somebody else is going to pay for it. That's <laughs> the that's the there's a politician's disease, and then there's the general public at large's disease, which is somebody else will always pay for it. That that's the thing. We want all those things as long as the public it's it's the again, it's the myth of the commons. It's you know, it's the whole thing all over again. Uh, tragedy of the commons uh, uh, all over it. Uh, all right, Brad. Well, we're out of time. Thank you for coming on board. Uh, as always, it's Michael. Thank, thank you for having me. Oh, man. I know. Uh, Jeannie said, when does the flogging stop? No offense to Brad, but I mean, when does the flogging stop? I don't know. Maybe when the wheels come off the bus. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the weekly top three.